Hey, how's it going? Uh, Alex Restrepo here again. This time I'm here with Joe D'Angelo. Once again, we're covering Veritas Enterprise Data Services, and we're focusing in today on availability. So Joe, I think availability, when a lot of folks think availability, they're thinking um, you know, on-prem kind of clustering, or maybe they're thinking of the kind of clustering maybe cloud providers might do for you. Sure. Where does Veritas kind of fit into this? It's a great question, Alex. So with availability at Veritas, we've been hyper-focused on the application. So much of the infrastructure availability that's uh, provided by either hypervisor providers or public cloud providers really doesn't address that issue. Uh, and today, hopefully, we'll be able to uh, show everyone here how we can do that with uh, Microsoft SQL Server. All right, cool. Sounds good. So what are we looking at here? So this is the dashboard, the uh, Veritas InfoScale Operations Manager. So any user today who has InfoScale is entitled to use this uh, as a solution. It gives them a sort of complete picture of their entire estate, both from an availability as well as storage management. So this is showing us stuff that's on-prem and in the cloud? Absolutely, absolutely. So the great thing about InfoScale Operations Manager, or Viom, is that you can categorize and organize things very easily. So as you can see here, I've got a couple of different categories that I've created. One's the uh, cloud clusters, the other is the on-prem clusters. Uh, what we're looking at here happens to be one of the cloud clusters. And this is SQL 2017. And you can see that what we've rendered here on the screen is the dependency map for all the resources that are needed for a SQL Server to be active. So you've got the database itself, you've got all of the um, replication components from uh, both on-prem as well to the public cloud and go back and forth. Uh, you've got the different mount points, IP addresses. But what's really cool is that because InfoScale is so adaptable to different platforms, uh, this is exactly the same view as you would get on-prem. So if you're accustomed to using it in the physical world or in, in VMware, the, the curve to get into AWS is it's pretty pretty. So the interaction and the behavior is the same across physical, virtual cloud. Absolutely, absolutely. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, why don't you show us some, some activity? Here? Absolutely, absolutely. So what we've got here, as I said before, is a dependency map. So here we've got the, the SQL database. We've got the various network agents that are needed to make it available. So you can easily uh, bring this guy online and offline or switch between nodes within AWS. So if you want to just say, for example, if you're running a database on, on an instance and just want to be able to fail it over, you can go ahead and you can offline this guy. You can just go ahead and click offline. And you click OK. So right now what's happening is it's communicating directly with it and kind of doing a graceful shutdown of it? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. It's talking to the SQL server, it's shutting down those services, it's unmounting all the file systems. It's actually even going into the EC2 dashboard itself using the AWS CLI, and it's actually removing any private IPs or elastic IPs or any particular specific networking components because we have agents that are specific for that platform. Did it just so succeed? See, so it did succeed, so we'll go ahead and... It takes a minute for it to render. So yeah, you can see now it's, it takes a little while because the it's what's doing here. Well, give it a second. It's going yeah. to space. It's going to space. That's yeah. true. It is going yeah. to space. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, right here, it's communicating this particular agent here, this AWS IP. It's like I said, it's using the AWS CLI. It's issuing those commands or that, that API framework. So when I set this up, am I having to input all those commands manually as far as the CLI interface? No, absolutely not. The only thing you have to do is install the package. So, oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, saving uh, some time, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So I think we're uh, we're good. This is now offline, so we can go ahead and now. What's unique about this particular configuration is that because we're using Volume Replicator, because this is actually currently being replicated not just for failover between within single availability zone, but it's actually being replicated back on prem. So this was originally built on prem, and we replicated it to AWS. So, I mean, is this the hybrid cloud I hear about? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, because I, I wanted to know, I mean, I've never seen a hybrid cloud. <laughs> yeah. it, it Usually like they're either just serious or cumulus. Cumulus, yeah. Right? But uh, both. <laughs> or both. All right. All right. Hybrid clouds and regular clouds, they look a lot alike. Cool. What I also wanted to describe here a little bit is some of the agents here because these are also very unique to, uh, to VCS. As you can see here, we have different EBS volumes. So one of the interesting things about AWS, well, it's not so much interesting, but one of the things you have to be cognizant of is that there are a lot of storage restrictions. Yeah. So for example, uh, within the context of a single availability zone, you cannot span, or you, between availability zones, you cannot span an EBS volume. And this particular example of a cluster uh, is within a single availability zone. So in order to actually fail over a service, you have to decouple that EBS volume. So we actually have an EBS volume agent that uses that same CLI framework, that same API framework, and we're able to actually detach and attach those EBS volumes as part of the failover. So you just tossed out a ton of acronyms. Yes, I did. And EBS and all these terms, I'm sure, are readily available out there. Yeah. To me, honestly, it sounds like the cloud is maybe a little more complex than people think at first. Absolutely. So we're seeing to be adding a nice little layer of abstraction to kind of help out with that. 
I would say that is a great way to describe it. Again, taking what was done on prem and adapting it for a new platform, not sort of you know not having to relearn all those those technologies. Cool. So let's go ahead. We're going to switch these guys over here. We're going to uh, switch to, and we're going to select the uh, the next target on the. Uh, cluster and it's going to go ahead now it's going to actually offline all these storage resources and then we're able to then bring them online on another node which is what's happening here in the background so we're going through and it's uh, it's taking its time here because we're actually again having to communicate out to that API framework detaching those uh, EBS volumes now what we're showing here doing this is all manual of course right this can be in, in, in a majority of the cases is configured to do it automatically, such in response to any kind of fault. Uh, and despite what uh, a lot of the architecture that gets from cloud providers around availability, be it 99.9999999% of the time, doesn't account for the application 0.0, as I like to say. So this is something that's really critical because cloud outages happen, despite what you know what, what most people believe. There. By default, are not their applications not protected? They sure. need a layer. So, like so their nine nine nines or whatever they're doing, that's talking about the infrastructure, not necessarily the data or Absolutely. the application in the Absolutely. infrastructure. Yep, yep, makes that, sense. That, makes sense. Those EBS, in, the EC two instances, and all the components underneath, rather than the application itself. As this wraps up, and we'll finish showing this. Anything else you want to tell us about this? Just that this particular configuration is available uh, today, both in AWS, Azure, and in GCP. Nice. Well, so not just both, but all three. But all three. Yeah. Correct. Now, you may think that you know sometimes this might be taking a little bit longer than you would expect, but think about it if you had to do this manually, right? I don't no. want to. You don't want to. No. It, it would take even longer, no. <laughs> considerably longer. All right. So let's see. We look like we're coming online here. Yep. So now they're coming back on. So now, now the services are pumped, as you can see, they're lighting up on the other node that's in that particular availability zone. And again, this can be configured to happen automatically. Absolutely. And so, it would. If, it so would. if I'm a financial or an airline or anything yeah. like that, and I want to keep this database up, no issues. No issues. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Well, thanks a lot for your time, Joe. Appreciate it, Alex. All right. Thanks again. And uh, again, send help. <laughs> See you guys.